Welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Join Martin, Dave, Spencer and guests as they discuss all things personal and professional development. The T2 Hubcast, brought to you by the People Performance People. So welcome to the T2 Hubcast with me, Martin Johnson. I'm on my own today in the Hubcast room, which is great. It's a nice sunny day. Uh, And it gives me just 15 minutes or so to talk to you all about a particular subject at the minute that we're talking a lot to our customers around. Um, It's separating opinion, some might say. It's uh, a challenge for many organizations at the minute. And it's um, it's the fundamental topic around inputs versus outputs versus outcomes. Now, the first thing to sort of mention on this is it's really important to sort of put to bed a myth that I think has been surrounding this topic for a number of years now. Uh, if you think about it, traditional leadership and traditional management over the past 30, 40 years has been very much hierarchical command and control and very much focused around you achieve a certain amount of inputs or you complete a certain amount of inputs that we require you to do. And when you do that on command, the outputs will come and we will be happy. So management by inputs has been a very traditional and and, and long-standing way of leading in organizations. And I think as time has gone on and cultures have changed um, through the different generations, there's been more of a focus on output. So you should, leaders should empower um, workers to manage their own inputs. As long as the outputs are clear, we will manage you by those outputs. So inputs versus outputs was very much a conversation for a number of years. But what was never discussed was outcomes, which is a completely different thing. So now there's organizations and there's and there's and the industry out there is sort of saying, well, we should measure people by outcomes. That's the ultimate sort of empowerment. That's the ultimate culture of empowerment. When you just solely say to people, these are the outcomes, the business outcomes we want you to drive. And however you do that from an inputs and outputs perspective, that is down to you. Well, I don't think it's as simple as that. I think it's entirely situational and there is an absolute time and a place for managers and leaders to uh, manage inputs, outputs and outcomes. So what we're going to talk about on this podcast is, and and you throw into the mix remote-based working and COVID-19 and some of the challenges and complexities that we have right now, and it's a really interesting topic for debate. So I'm going to talk you through this um, systematically and logically, and I'm sure you're going to take something away from it. So the first thing to do is actually define what we mean by inputs, outputs, and outcomes. Now, inputs. So these are the things, the inputs that our employees put into their job role or into the workplace that drive output. So let me give you an example. Different types of inputs would be decisions that we make, the actions that we take and the activities that we undertake. So things like decisions, actions, and activities are inputs. The fundamental things we can possibly do physically on a daily basis are our inputs. Um, And the input should be very much centered around driving the right outputs for our role. So what are outputs? Well, if you think about it, if inputs are decisions, actions, and activities, the outputs will be the results of that input it will either lead to progression, the progression of something, or a regression of something. So we either move something forward or deliver something better or something gets worse as a, as, as a result of our inputs, as a result of the decisions we, we, we make, the actions we take, and the activities we undertake. So outputs are very much results driven around either something progressing or regressing. So what are outcomes and how... Do outcomes differ to outputs? Well, if outputs are the results of your inputs, either that leads to progression or regression, then outcomes are the changes, improvements, or the deterioration of of something. So the outcome is the true end outcome. Let me give you an example of this in a couple of different business areas so it can make more sense. So let's take a sales context, for example. In a sales context, a person's inputs would be the calls and the emails 
that they make. So the calls they make to customers, whether that be new business calls or account management calls, the emails they send, you know, the, these are the types of inputs of a salesperson. So what are the outputs of a salesperson? Well, as a result of those calls and emails, it should result in meetings and proposals. So if you're a new business salesperson, your inputs are calls and emails, and usually your organizations put a number on those type of things traditionally, the outputs will be, I've got five new meetings in the diary, or I've got two new proposals out this week. So the outputs are a result of the inputs. It either has regressed our situation with the customer or it's progressed it to a proposal or a meeting. What are the outcomes for salespeople? Well, bloody sales, right? Sales on the board, contracts signed, invoices sent is the fundamental outcome of a salesperson. So salespeople, it's very, it's, it's more simple in sales than some of the other departments, but inputs are calls and emails, outputs would be meetings and proposals, and the outcome would be sales. Let's have a look at a customer service example, so slightly shifting it. Um, the inputs of a customer service agent or advisor or representative would be the response time response times to a customer calling in or emailing in or contacting us and the process then that we would undertake for that customer. So the inputs of a customer service advisor is very much centered around my ability to respond to you, engage you, and then follow a process with you. The outputs for the customer service advisor would be resolution. So if I can resolve a problem for you or resolve an issue, then that would be the output. What is the outcome? It's a happy customer. It is a happy customer. And that would be a, a true outcome for a customer sales advisor or representative to be aiming for. If the outcome is a happy customer, I need to find resolutions to problems, which means, means I need to be hot on my process and follow the right processes and be very quick uh, and efficient with my response times. Marketing, we can even step this on. So marketing examples would be the inputs might be social media activity, emails, advertising campaigns. The outputs of that would be engagement and reach. And the, uh, the sorry, the outputs would be engagement and reach. And the outcomes would be leads, generation of leads for the organization. Finance, we can go into finance. Credit control is the inputs. Uh, getting customer commitment for payment is the output and cash in the bank is the outcome. And you know what? We could go through every single department of an organization and talk about the difference between inputs, outputs, and outcomes, but I think you're getting the gist. And just to summarize this before we move it along, at present, we can look at three things as leaders and managers. We can look at our people's inputs, their outputs, or their outcomes. Inputs are simply the decisions, actions, and activities they undertake. The outputs are the results, which will either result in progression or regression of a, of a situation. And the outcomes are the tangible changes, improvements, or deterioration of that situation. Now, fast forward to this year and COVID-19. It's been a really challenging time. A lot of organizations have found themselves having to completely you know, remodel the way they work. They've had to send people home for home-based working. They've had to keep some people on premise. We've had a hybrid of worker. Um, it's led to managers not being in the physical proximity of where where their team are, and it's created a, a number of challenges. But what we're seeing, and the reason for this podcast is this, we are seeing a number of managers regress back to managing by inputs. Now, as I made a sort of statement at the start of this podcast saying over the years, over the last 30, 40 years, we've gone from traditional uh, thinking around managing people by inputs and they'll do as they're told and the outputs and outcomes will come into empowerment of cultures and, and our employees around, you know, we will we, we'll measure you by outputs and outcomes and it's up to you what inputs go into that. Well, that's all well and good saying that. And it's all well, well and good saying that we want to be an organization who manages by outcomes or, or outputs. Um, but it's not strictly um, true because it should be situationally relevant to the, to, the, to the department, the person, the task at hand, right? So here's a couple of things um, uh, to talk about as we go forward and we have these complexities to manage. What is making managers gravitate back towards inputs? Well, Let's think about the current situation. Number one is proximity. Proximity is an issue. For people who have worked on-premise, on-site, in the same proximity of their teams, they've been used to team meetings every Monday, every Friday, you know, managing people in an office space, sat at the same desk space sometimes. You know, when you take that away and you've got remote working, 
it's a change and the proximity is cause or the lack of proximity is causing a problem. It's causing a trust issue. You know, we're seeing a lot of managers um, have a trust issue with uh, their employees' response times working from home. You know, if you shouted across the desk or you emailed somebody in the office, you could usually drive a response within five minutes. And if you didn't, you could shout over or walk into the office and say, why aren't you responding to my email, right? You don't have that luxury now. So when we are having an experience in employees who are not timely in their responses, it's creating a mistrust or a lack of trust sometimes in their managers. Homeschooling, you know, you throw homeschooling in the mix and it's causing a real challenge with the type of hours and the set hours people can work. Usually the mornings are highly disruptive and interruptive when people are trying to get kids logged on to school and classes and lessons. You know, or employees who are working from home and home-based workers are tending to log on later in the day, which at this point, the office-based workers have either knocked off or gone home or your managers work in different hours. So that that lack of uh, working, you know, consistent times is also causing an issue with proximity. The second thing that's causing a little bit of anxiety towards managers managing inputs more is business performance. So COVID and the recession is well and truly gripping and some businesses are flying and doing really well. Some are not. And, and if you're, you're operating in a business that's not performing well, There'll be pressure right from the top at the moment to perform, and that's then leading managers to become more focused on inputs and what people are doing almost on an hourly basis. The third thing to think about is the cadence of Teams and Zoom meetings, and what I mean by cadence is the regularity of them. We seem to be going Teams and Zoom mad, and I never thought that I'd experience this, but you get sort of Zoom fatigue, right? You spend three or four uh, meetings in a row on a Teams or Zoom call, and you're tired, your eyes are sore, you know, you're, you're mentally fatigued. Um, and I think because managers and leaders are checking in more than they usually would via Teams and Zoom meetings, it only takes three meetings into this week when we no longer can talk about outcomes and outputs, but we have to start really talking about what you're doing. Uh, it almost feels like a bit of a reporting uh, call. So, the focus tends to go on inputs more the more Teams and Zoom check-in stroke meetings we have. The fourth thing is uncertainty and anxiety. Of course, COVID-induced anxiety is happening all the time. The unpredictable future, the not knowing is causing a lot of managers and leaders to procrastinate, to worry, to become anxious themselves as a person, which then leads to a management style probably of being overly analytical, uh, overly questioning and focusing on those inputs. And finally, the final one, which most organizations won't like to admit it, but it is the truth, is leadership. You know, senior leadership from the top, board-level executives, um, when their communication is poor, when their tendency is to micromanage their managers, it only rolls one way, and that's downhill. When that need for control, to wrestle back that control as a result of some of the things we've talked about, a lack of proximity, poor business performance, right, uncertainty, when all that starts to go into the melting pot, senior leaders have a wobble. And that's where their communications become more directive and more micromanaging of their managers. And the managers then feel under pressure. So they pass that on. And then we start talking about inputs on a daily basis. So there's a few things there going on. And we've got to understand and embrace that. We're only human. And as a result of that, you know, we've got to understand that uh, this is entirely natural and we're all experiencing this. So coming, coming to the final point I want to make on this podcast, what is the right approach? Is it the traditional approach of you manage by inputs and you let the outputs and outcomes take care of themselves? Is it actually we need to empower our people? We're better than that. We need to either manage them by outcomes and outputs and not worry about the inputs. Let them decide on, on that. Um, well, the answer is there is no one size fits all. And anybody who stands here today in 2021 and says we are a measurement by outcomes only business, we are an empowering organization who will only stipulate the outcomes and we get out your way. Anybody who says that is probably embellishing the truth of the reality of what is actually going on in their organization. And likewise, anybody who says, no, 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 I'm old school, we're old school, in the nature of what we do, you have to measure by inputs. You have to have an eye on inputs. You know, that's an embellishment of the truth as well. The reality is it is situationally relevant. For example, I would always say as a, as a, a rule of thumb, as a good working practice, work backwards from outcomes. That's the first salient point I want to make as we start to finish this podcast. 
work back from outcomes where you can try to measure and manage your people by outcomes only. So salespeople, I am going to measure you on sales. Customer service people, I'm going to measure you on happy customers and feedback. Marketing, I'm going to measure you on the number of sales leads or general leads that you bring in to this organization or how much you raise our brand awareness. Finance, I'm going to measure you fundamentally by the cash in the bank. You know, whatever it might be, health and safety, I'm going to measure you by zero incidents. You know, whatever it might be, outcomes is a great way to start. And that's what I think as a lead in modern day, given the generational shift, most organizations should consider as a starting point, you work backwards through outcomes. However, when the outcomes aren't there, as business leaders and owners, we have to work backwards to outputs. And here's the thing I'm saying here, you know, work back from outcomes, but don't jump straight to inputs. If anything, sit in outputs and coach outputs as long as you possibly can. Only focus on inputs for two reasons, where there is persistence, persistent underperformance or when we're crisis management, when we're in a crisis and we're, we're, we're managing a crisis. So two reasons, persistent underperformance or crisis management. Then we should absolutely wrestle back some control and on the inputs. Other than that, work backwards from outcomes and, and if possible, sit in outputs and coach. So in a sales scenario, if the sales aren't there, I aren't going to jump to the number of calls they're making each day. I'm going to go, right, let's have a look at the meetings you're having and the proposals you're sending out. Is the lack of sales as a result of the quality of our proposals or the way we're conducting our meetings? I'm going to try and coach in that area first. If there's no meetings and no proposals because we have, aren't doing the inputs, then I've got no choice to go back into the inputs and focus on the number of calls and the number of emails we're making. You know, if I'm working with marketing and there's no leads coming through at all, we are generating no leads and we're spending an awful lot of marketing budget, then let me look back into the outputs. What campaigns are we running? What engagement are we getting from them? And who are we reaching and targeting? Let's focus in that before we go back to the basics of actually, let me check the social media posts we're writing. Let's have a look at the email content uh, marketing stuff we're doing over email. Let me actually inspect our ads, you know, all that type of stuff. Let's try and coach the inputs first. And if we do that, then we're going to start with empowerment and trust and we're going to get hopefully go a long way to building trust and rapport with our people. But as a manager or leader, make no mistake, we reserve the right to work back through to inputs if the quality of outputs is not there. So for me, it's a big myth, this. We have to transition to outcome-based leadership only. We have to empower and trust our people, be clear on the outcomes and get out of the way. I think starting at that point is a really great point and, and, it, and it does go a long way as long as the outcomes are achieved. But when they're not, we have no option but to work backwards through to outputs and if necessary, through to inputs. And that is just great leadership. It's situationally relevant for that situation. So anybody out there who feels like they're, overly micromanaging at the minute or they're lifting the covers up on their on their people's inputs just ask yourself the question is it justified in the context of this person's outcomes are not there and their outputs are also not of the standard that we need if the answer to those two questions is yes then you are rightly focusing on the inputs and that is what great leaders should do to to drive up performance or turn around a crisis if you find yourself managing the inputs and asking for inputs and worrying about the inputs, and that is purely based on your anxieties, on your style of management, because you're getting pressure from the top, whatever it might be. But that person actually, when you lift up, uh, the covers up, their outputs are there and they are driving the outcomes, then you need to back off, right? That's your issue, not um, the, 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 the employee's issue. So the, the conundrum is this, understand what inputs are versus outputs versus outcomes and understand what they are in the context of your department or your area of expertise. If you're in sales, write a list of the inputs that your people are required to do. Write a list of outputs that you're measuring by and absolutely be clear on what outcomes you need to happen. And the same for any department. And that will help you work backwards as a leader, starting at the end of trust and empowerment. Here's the outcomes. If the outcomes are there, I don't care. I don't give a shit. You can work one hour a day, you know, have one proposal in the pipeline. I don't care. If your outcomes are there, your outcomes are there. 
if the outcomes are not there, work back through to inputs only. Try to sit in inputs and coach, sorry, in outputs and coach outputs before you get involved in inspecting the inputs. That's what great leaders do. But if performance isn't there and it's not get, you're not getting what, what's required, have the courage and conviction to work back through to inputs. It's not a dying uh, thing to look at the inputs of your employees. It's absolutely not. It's imperative as long as we're starting and working backwards. And just be conscious right now that there are a number of things, like I said, that are uh, thrown in the mix that are absolutely causing leaders to overly focus on inputs. Lack of proximity with your people and your remote-based workers, throwing things like homeschooling and different working hours. It really does challenge trust at times. Certainly if you're a leader that has personality styles and traits around control and perfection. Uh, business performance, you know, generally business business performance is suffering through COVID and recession, so the heat and the pressure is on. The regularity of check-ins virtually is causing us sometimes to micromanage. So just sense check, what is the nature of that check-in? You know, does it always have to be about performance? Can't it just be a check-in on well-being or how we're getting on, whatever it might be, just to break it up? Be aware of uncertainty. It is a very uncertain time and that will cause behaviors in you as a manager that, you know, traditionally you might not display. And finally, put the umbrella up. If your senior leaders and execs are communicating poorly, are panicking, flapping, micromanaging, you know, if they're oppressing a control type style of leadership on you, you have to put your umbrella up and, and filter that out from your people below. Because if you get caught up in that cycle and you start micromanaging, we're going to we're not going to drive productive outcomes. So hopefully that was useful for this particular podcast. Think about inputs, outputs versus outcomes. I'm a leader who likes to start with outcomes and works back. I will very rarely jump outputs straight into inputs. I'll sit in the outputs if necessary and coach on how we can drive those outputs better. And if quite frankly that's not working then we've got to have a look at every single input that's happening on a daily and weekly basis and that's great leadership. So think about that. Hopefully that gives you a frame, framework to work within and it just will allow you hopefully in 21 minutes that we've spent together, just sense check what is your leadership style right now, what are you getting dragged into and is there a way you can slightly shift to lead better. That's all for this uh, Hubcast and we'll be back shortly with another T2 Hubcast. Thank you.